Alright, so one knock out nine point one today. So it shouldn't be a full hour and fifteen minutes on this, but we'll see. Guys, we're left with what we call a composition of functions. Maybe. Let me pull one up. We'll see. Any of y'all ever done stuff like physics and chemistry? So if you did them kind of classes, you might have did some of this composition of functions. It's where I take one function and put it into the x's of another function. So like in science, if you're doing a formula for maybe work, and work is force times distance, and you might have had another formula for the force, you can put that formula into the formula for the work and get them answers that way. Or a bank might use a formula for your interest and then add that to a formula for your overall balance. So it's when you use one formula inside of another formula, okay? So there are two styles we're going to look at. F of G of X, and that's not really a, a zero or a O. It looks like a little degree symbol. But that little degree symbol is what we call a composition operator. Now, when you see, I basically call this fog, but when you see the fog like this, it really means F of G of X. And so, work these are almost like order of operation, work the innermost parentheses, and work your way out. So, in this problem, First thing I would do is find my G of X. Once I find my G of X, I will plug G of X into F of X. Okay. Do so we need to plug? Uh, well, whatever they got going on. Last name. Okay, Tyler. And then, um, we just plug that G of X into the S of X. All we can do at that point is either simplify or combine my terms. All right, y'all. The other style will be G composed F of X. Well, same thing, different order. So on this one, I would have a G of F of X. So remember, still following order of operations, work the innermost parentheses first. So first thing I would have to find is F of X. Then I would plug the F of X into my G of X. Third, simplify or combine my terms. They're really similar, it's just you got to see which one's going first. Okay. And this is the one place where math might go right to left. 
So my first step would be to plug this X into my G, get that answer, and then plug that, all that into my F, okay? Well, these aren't bad. Let me write one of these problems up there to sort of show you, okay? So we're going to let f of x equal negative 2x minus 1. g of x is x squared plus 2. They want me to find f Compose G of a negative one. Okay, so I think the first three examples they give you numbers to plug in. The last three, they're just gonna give me the variable. So the last three might be a little trickier than the first three. So this is like F of G of negative one. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is find G of negative one. Y'all with me? So to find G of negative one, I take the G equation, X squared plus two, and when they got an X, we're gonna put negative one, right? So G of negative one, take the G equation, and put a negative one in for that x. Now, if y'all use that calculator and you put a negative number in there to square it, you better put the negative in parentheses. Because if you do this on the calculator, negative one squared, it'll give you negative one. But negative one times negative one ain't a negative one, is it? <laughs> That better be what a positive one, okay? So on the calculator, you want to do it like this so that it gives you a one instead of a negative one, okay? And there you go. Negative one squared is one plus two, and one plus two gives me three. So G is negative one equals three. So what we got to do now, this three. It goes into my f of x. Kind of put the one in g, got that answer. I'm going to put that answer in my f. So that means I'm finding f of 3. All right, so do the f equation. f has negative 2 times my x minus 1. Well, my x we said was 3. All right, so I'm multiplying, then I can subtract. So negative 2 times 3 would give me a negative 6 minus 1, negative 7. So the final answer on that is definitely negative seven. So y'all see what we did? We put the first number into the G, got that answer, put it in the F, okay? Had that been reversed, I'd put my number in the F and then got that answer and put in the G. It's tricky at first, y'all get used to them. Hey, I have a question. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, that, so that one squared thing, is that only for the calculator? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Just remember, anytime you do square a negative, though, and it's got an exponent right by it, that's got to become a positive. Anything squared better be positive, right? Because like sine. Okay. You know, calculators are wonderful, but operator error messes them answers up. Okay. All right, y'all. So this time, f of x will equal two x plus two. And g of x is going to equal 
x squared minus 3x minus 4. We're going to find g of f of 7. All right, so remember, that's just the same as g of f of 7. And y'all, that's the biggest thing I can do to y'all, is just reverse the order of the f and the g's on these to make a big difference, okay? So the first thing I'm going to find is my f of 7. You'll get an answer. Let's see. So you're finding the f of seven. So that would be two times x, which is seven plus two. We pretty quick at it. So that'd be what? 14 plus two, which is definitely. And that's going to be a little bit trickier though. So since I got a 16 here, the 16 now goes into my g. So we're going to find g of 16 now. But notice g has two x's, so I will replace both of those x's with the 16 on this. So I'm going to have 16 squared minus 3 times 16 minus the 4. So it still looks like x squared minus 3x minus 4. Oh, I was going to get y'all about that calculator to see if y'all knew what 16 times 16 is. I just, Don't feel bad. Y'all come from Arkansas. Said, oh, so. sorry. <laughs> Arkansas, we quit at 12, remember? <laughs> so I did all that one times one all the way up to 12 times 12. So it is 200 and. Are you going to get the whole answer though? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So that part is 256. Minus 3 times 16 is 48. Minus no 4. So it was what? 204. 204. Okay, so you just got to look who first. Get that answer and put it into the one that comes second. Got right, question on that? So I'm going to do one more, one more of numbers and then they're going to start playing with just the variables on them, okay? Aren't you on this one? F of x is 5x plus 3. G of x is x to the third. I'm going to find F of G of a negative 3. Okay, so the first thing I got to find is the g of the negative 3. So you know, g was x to the third. Now, we'll tell you this. If the exponents are odd like that 3 is, you won't be wrong either way if you put that negative in parentheses. So the negative times negative times negative is still going to be a negative. So that wouldn't really matter on it, but then if it is an even exponent, you better put it in parentheses. Okay? So this is going to give me negative 3 to the third power. That's going to be negative something. Negative 27. Negative 27. Now, since I know the G, I know what to put into my F. So now we're going to find F of this negative. 
27. So it's going to be my F equation, which is 5x plus 3. So 5 times my x, which is negative 27 plus 3. Okay, so she did a negative 135 here. Right, then that negative 135 plus that 3 was a negative 132. Okay. Good or bad with numbers. Now, I don't think I have yet, but I'll send y'all a video doing those on the calculator actually. They sort of tricky, but they can be done. All right, so it looks like the next one we're going to play with just variables and no numbers to plug in, okay? So y'all own this one, f of x is going to equal x plus 15, g of x is going to equal x minus 15. They want us to find f of g of x, g of f of x, and the domains of both. So what I'll do is I'll play with my f of g, my g of f, and then I'll play with them two domains, okay? So let's start out with fog. Remember, this is like what? F of G of X. So for that one, my first step is to find G of X. Remember, I don't have no number to plug into it. So I know what G of X is. G of X was X minus 15. So we can do anything to that. No? So if it won't simplify any further, this now goes into f of x. Okay, we was happy over here when we had a number we could plug in. This one, we don't have a number, so we got to plug the whole function in there. So I'm going to be finding f of an x minus 15. So that's what my g of x gave me, right? So that means when I take that f of x equation where it has an x, I'm going to replace that x with the x minus 15. See y'all ready? So notice I got an x right here, that x. I'm going to replace with the x minus 15, right? But I still have a plus 15. So I now have my x plus 15 still, right? Hey, uh, doesn't that just mean an x? Huh? Doesn't that, you have to go 15 down to an x? That's it, right? Because that's the only thing I can do to that, is that negative 15 plus 15 cancel. So these cancel. So this f of x minus 15 is definitely a uh, x. So we go have a, well, I'm going to do my g and then we'll knock out both of them domains. So I think in math I'd have to do this, then do the other, then it asks you for the two domains. So now I'm going to find g of f of x. So that'll be g of f of x. So the first thing on this one we're going to find is the f of x. So once again, I had no numbers to replace it with. So f of x they gave me was, what is that, x plus 15? 
Can you do anything to the X115? No. no. So that whole thing is now going into the G. So this goes into G of X. That means I'm going to be finding a G of X plus 15. So take that G equation. It is X minus 15. Replace that X with the X plus 15. So I'll have X plus 15 minus 15. So what happens on that? Same thing, right? Cancel them 15 down. So this ends up equaling the A. Now they're not all going to do that. Y'all just got lucky because that had a plus 15 and a minus 15 up there, okay? So now let's look at the domain of F of G first. Well, I'll start out with my G, any restrictions? So now we'll say in this section there will be two. Oh, y'all, let me do one thing first. Let me explain interval notation real quick before I do these domains, okay? Because they don't want domain with that. X is a real number and X not equal to whatever, blah, blah, no more, okay? They want interval notation on our um, domains now. So interval notation to represent all real numbers. We use Negative infinity to positive infinity. I mean, y'all probably seen that somewhere in life, hopefully. But negative infinity is as far as I can go to the negative side, positive infinity, or as I can go to the right side, which I ain't really no ending points are there. But you can always add one more and keep going and keep going. Now so all real numbers. Now, infinity always uses curvy parentheses, okay? Later in life, we might use brackets. Now, if we need to exclude a number, from the domain, We use what I call a union. And it's going to look like that. That union means and. And if that was turned over, it would mean or. I don't know if y'all have ever seen them things before. So if I need to exclude a number from the domain, I'm going to use the union, okay? Now, Remember, if the number you're excluding um, does not have equal signs, then use curvy parentheses. If number excluded, has a equal sign, use brackets. So the brackets mean it can equal that number. The curvy parentheses means it cannot. So here's the trick. When we're dealing with fractions, we're going to have curvy parentheses. 
when we deal with the radical in a little bit, we can use brackets. Okay. So back to my question now. I'm going to find the domain f of g of x. So I'm going to look at this. X minus 15. There's no fractions here. It's basically with a variable in the denominator, right? There's no square root radicals there. So I'm not worried about anything on this problem. I can put any number in for that X, and I'm going to get any number out of that, right? So I can put a 5 in here. It works. I can put a negative 5 in there. It works. I can put any number in there and subtract 15 from it, okay? So since I'm not being restricted by fractions or radicals, my domain is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So no restrictions at all on that one, okay? What about F, uh, G of F? Any fractions on G of F? Any radicals? No, so I don't have nothing to worry about. Nothing's going to make that undefined or imaginary numbers, right? So my domain will be the same. It'll be negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? Don't worry, my next one has stuff I got to kick out. Okay. So this goes back to almost like 2.2 .2 was. They gave you f of x. If it wasn't a fraction, y'all said, oh, this works for all real numbers. If it wasn't a fraction, then you had to solve the bottom, right? Okay. But later in life, they love this interval notation. So I'm going to get y'all good at that. Right, so this one ain't fraction yet, but it's getting closer. All right, now that's what makes is x plus one. G of x. All right, I got seven x squared minus six x minus one. I'm going to do the same thing I did here. I'm going to find f of g of x, g of f of x. And then my domains of each. So let's start out with f of g of x. So the first thing we're going to find is g of x. Okay, so this is like f of g of x. We'll work intermodes out. Y'all get x equals what? 7x squared minus 6x minus the 1. So I'm going to ask, can you do anything to that? No. So guess what? That whole thing now goes into the f. And it's a quite a long function compared to what I was doing a while ago, okay? So this all goes into f. So that really means we're finding f of a 7x squared minus 6x minus 1. Because right, that's telling me what I got to put in for my x's, right? Thank God there's only one x on this. I got x plus 1. So to replace my x, I'll have 7x squared minus 6x minus 1. And then at the end, it's still a plus 1. So, we're going to go further for that one. The one's canceled out. The one's canceled out. So, let's see, I get what? A 7x squared minus 6x. Can you go further? No. no, so that'd be my final answer for the f of g. No, that was the easy one. So I guess we're going to find g of f of x. Which 
which is g of f of my x. Okay. So the first thing we're going to find on this one is the f of x. Y'all, that gave me f of x. I'm going to place the best of x. I'm going to put x plus 1. So, can we go further? No. no. So, all of this now goes into the g. So, I'm probably going to need more room for this one, right? So since this all goes into G, so my second step is to find G of an X plus one. But remember, that means everywhere there's an X in that G, I'm going to put an X plus one, okay? So here's G, seven times X squared. Well, X is X plus one squared minus six times the X. But that also needs to be a x plus one. And then at the end is b minus one. So notice I still got seven x squared minus six x minus one sitting there, okay? So what would y'all do first to that? Distribute the second. I'll do that second. <clears throat> What's got priority over multiplication that y'all see there? The exponent, right? There's an exponent. Remember, PE, please excuse Aunt Sally. Exponent is second priority after inside parentheses, okay? So you got an x plus one squared sitting here. So let's find what that is. That don't equal x squared plus one. You can't just square both of those. When you got a binomial being squared, you need to take that x plus one and write another x plus one. So this is really an x plus one times x plus one. What are you doing now? Mm -hmm. Distribute or the fancy word we call distribute. Mm -hmm. Pull them. There you go. I'm going to follow this. Anytime you got two things being followed by an exponent, you're going to write it twice and foil. So you notice I'm doing a lot of what I call side work right now. Because I'm going to figure this out and then stick it right behind that seven, okay? So here we go. X times X. Excuse me, X squared. Mm -hmm. So if you did a plus an X, plus an X, plus a one. And then you must have added those like terms, right? And I got x's in the middle. So I get an x squared. One and one gave her two x plus one. That's all going to replace the x plus one squared part of this. So here we go. Bring down the seven. Put all this in there. x squared plus two x plus one. You still got minus six times x plus one. Minus one. So all this side work was just figuring out what that square was, okay? Oh, hi, John. All right, question online. Question. Right. Now guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna distribute. I'm gonna distribute the seven to the first parentheses. A negative six to the second parentheses and then bring down that one, okay? So let's see. Seven times x squared. Is it seven x squared, right? Seven times two x is a 14 x. Seven times one is a seven. And then I got what? A negative six times x is a negative six x. Minus six and then minus my one. Can I go further? 
Oh, I bet so, right? I got all kinds of nice terms up here. Hmm. Now, the 7x squared can't add to nobody, so bring it down. But y'all, these 14 x's and them negative 6 x's will add together. Uh, what I'm going to say, 14 minus 6 is going to give us 8 x's. And then you got a 7, a negative 6, and a negative 1 that'll all add together. I think that cancels on it. 7 is negative 6 and negative 1. So that cancels. So my final answer is 7x squared plus 8x. So these are in college algebra now. They're going to get y'all with them x plus 1 squares all year. We're going to be falling crazy in here. Especially when we hit 8.3, we're going to foil and then foil again. Sometimes I've got to foil again. Okay, so there might be fours on those exponents. So if you're not going in there, you go. Um, what was that? Domain. So this will be the domain of f of g of x. So I did f of g right here. Any restrictions on this? And by restrictions, I mean fractions and radicals. I don't see no fractions, all right, y'all. Yeah. And there sure ain't no radicals because I ain't drawn one yet. So no restrictions. So my domain is. Mm -hmm. So negative infinity, two a, positive infinity. What about the domain of G of F? Well, G was the second one we did over there. We didn't do a lot of falling, but I still didn't have any fractions. I still don't have any radicals. So if I had any one of those, my domain is exactly the same. Y'all notice even in 2.4 when y'all was doing it, when you found one operation, wasn't they all about the same? Like if you excluded one number here, you excluded it on the second one and on the third one and so on, okay? All right, the questions on that. I just want to break out a wrap on this one, okay? Hmm. They're not bad. Hey, are you pulling enough homework? Is it showing just six problems? Mm, yes. Okay. Make sure they didn't change stuff up on me. So this is number six then. So the first three are going to have just numbers in them, you know, and then the last three will be X's like I'm doing, okay? I got F of X. Okay. It's going to be 6X plus 1. G of X. Is going to be a square root of x. Square root. Y'all remember this bad boy, right? Oh, y'all don't like them? Well, they just undo and multiply. They undo and multiply the same number times itself, right? So 5 times 5 is 25. Square root of 25 is 25. So to me, they just undo the x on it. Um, but when I get to the domain, I will be worried about that radical, okay? So first, let me find f of g of x. So first, we got to get our g of x. But they gave that to me. They said g of x was a square root of x. Can you do anything to a square root of x? Well, not yet, because we don't know what number that thing is, do we? So guess what? This now goes into the F. So y'all, you're doing four, five, and six. You're going to take one function, 
He basically told him to hit the other, okay? So that means I'm going to find f of a square root of x. So where f has an x, I'm going to put that square root now. So I got 6 times my x, which is the square root of x, plus 1. But you know, when you're plugging into them, they still look like them, right? It's just the x's are different. So what can I do to that? Can I add them? No, because radicals square root of x's only add the other square root of x's. Can't you make make it take that to the to the what? Can you make it take that square root? Uh no. well I can't change that because I don't have another side I'm really doing, remember? What you do to one side you do to the other. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say I'm gonna stop there. Now later on, we'll write them radicals as fractional exponents and all that fun stuff. But right now, y'all, we're just playing with the radical, okay? So you cannot do anything else to that. So that is my final answer. So what was, uh, let's see. That's the first one, right? So now I got to find g of f of x. Which means first thing I'm going to do is find my f of x. And y'all just doing the order of operations when it comes to parentheses. Remember parentheses, you start innermost and work your way out. So that's why I'm sort of writing like this to try and work an inner and then stepping out on those, okay? Uh, f of x, all right, here it is, is 6x plus 1. Can we do anything with that? No. Nope. No. So this is now going into our G. So I'm going to be finding a G of a 6X plus 1. And are y'all getting used to this just telling me what the X's are going to be? Right? F of whatever, G of whatever. You're just telling me what you plug in on, okay? All right, so find my g. It's the square root of x. So this will now be the square root of 6x plus 1. 6x plus 1. Can I do anything to that? No, I can't add the 6x and 1 because so they're not like terms. Can't take the square root of this stuff. So that would be my final answer. A lot of these, once you do the replacement, you're Sort of done because you're not able to go no further on those, okay? But your know, domains are going to be a little different, okay? So before I find my domains, let me refresh y'all for a second on radicals. So I'm going to call it a radical domain. So a radical. I can take square root of positive numbers, right? Square root of one is. I can take square root of a four, get me a two. And I can take square root of numbers like two and three and get never ending decimals. But the point is I can take square root of them. Can I take square root of zero? All right, y'all got a capital that. So you're going to do a square root of zero. Zero, you can do anything to, right? The square root of zero is zero. So you can take the square root of the zero. But what you cannot do, can you take the square root of the negative one? Oh, it gives me an error in what you're saying on the very top. There's no real number. It's not a real number. If you take the square root of a negative number, this would basically give you a 1i. Does that bring you back memories? So the square root of a negative 4 would be a 2i, and so on, okay? But imaginary numbers are definitely not real numbers, right? In the real world, 
there's no way to get a negative one multiplying a one times one or a negative one times negative one, right? Like signs are always positive. So that's how come if it's negative under there, you're going to get what we call imaginary numbers, okay? So that means the smallest number I can take the square root of is a zero, okay? So when you're doing a domain of a radical number, instead of saying it's not equal to zero, I know x has to be greater than or equal to the zero. Now, do y'all remember a while ago when I was talking about this domain, I said if it had equals in it, I'm going to use brackets instead of parentheses, okay? And it definitely has a equals on it. So now let me go back to these here. So we're going to find a domain of f of g of x. Now, let me say how I would write this in interval notation. Right here, x is greater than or equal to zero. So it's going to be a bracket with my zero. Because remember, the bracket means it can equal to zero, and then it heads off towards infinity. There you go. And the other way you might see this is negative infinity up to the number, okay? So let's find f of g over here. f of g, I started out with a square root of x, and I ended up with basically a square root of x. So I know that I'm going to take that square root of x. We know that this x underneath has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, this one didn't have nothing to solve, right? So you're done. So my domain is from zero to infinity. But y'all, the domain of the next one will be a little different. Look at this domain. You got a 6x plus 1 sitting up under that radical. So we do know that that 6x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to what number? Zero. Zero. But y'all notice this one's not going to be the same answer, right? So this one has numbers in it. So I'm going to solve that for the x. So here we go. I'm going to start off by subtracting one from both sides. So 6x is greater than or equal to a negative 1. Alright, that's it. Now y'all, at this point, I'm going to recall y'all on one thing. Had that been a negative 6, x greater than or equal to a negative 1, if I divide by a negative number on the inequality, what's the trick? Oh, so let me bring y'all back over here. So say I had this. Now this ain't my problem, but say I did have this and I divide both these by negative six. What would y'all do? Y'all better be switching that damn thing right there around, right? So that this would be x is greater than or equal. If you divide by negatives on the inequality, you gotta reverse it, okay? All right, so we didn't have to on this, and I just wanted to remind y'all, if you ended up with negative x's, you better switch it around, okay? So I'm just going to get x greater than or equal to a negative one six. So how am I going to write that in interval notation? Well, I know the smallest number it can be is yeah. that negative one six. And tell me x can be greater than or equal, so that's why I got the bracket now so that it equals infinity. And infinity always has a curve. Okay, so I'm going to show y'all one more thing before I let y'all out of here. I also got time with this. Oh, I'm missing you up there. 
That 206 messes me up. This is my first time to start at 10 and it's already killing 11. I'm like, I feel like I'm busy while I'm home. Okay. It's still off. Oh, you can set that? I think I can. There's a button on the side of my screen. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I'll make that a 107. Okay. But let me show y'all one thing. On a, on a, so let me just show y'all one thing about interval notation. With fractions. So say I wanted to find a domain and I had f of x equals something like 2 over x plus 7. Because y'all see this with the set builder notation, but I want y'all to see this, how to do this in interval notation. So I do know that the x plus 7 on the bottom cannot equal the zero. But if you notice, all my domains focus on zeros at least, right? So solve that in one step. So that you get x cannot equal a negative 7. So watch this. For this domain of this, I would start way out here at negative infinity. So y'all, I'm cruising along with all them numbers, and bam, I hit negative seven. I cannot equal negative seven, right? The negative seven made down to zero. So watch this. I'm going to go negative seven. And I'm going to put a curvy parenthesis around that negative seven. Because remember, a curvy parenthesis means it don't equal that number. Because it ain't a bracket. Brackets equal the number, curvy parentheses don't. Now watch this. Remember I said I'm going to use that union? The union means and. So it's like saying you got this part of the domain and your other part of the domain. But still, the only number restricted was negative seven. So y'all see this union skips around the negative seven. I can go from the negative number right up to that negative seven. Can't equal it. But then I can take negative seven. I can't equal it, but any number after that negative seven I can take. So what's the last thing I need there? Infinity. Infinity and close it. So every number we exclude from a interval notation is union down of there. Okay. Well, that's it. If I had to exclude two numbers, I'd have two unions in there. Which we'll start doing two numbers when we hit like 4.8, I think. So we get quadratic stuff in the second test material. Um, but yeah, if you want to exclude any numbers, you union them. And remember, every rational function, which is a fraction, starts at negative infinity to Positive. You just got to find what numbers you're picking out of it, okay? And that has the same power as that stuff y'all were doing last week. X is a real number, and X cannot equal negative seven, okay? So I think that the three problems in here, we had to do the domain. One of them actually in this interval notation, okay? So fractions get a union. Radicals get brackets, okay? So those should have been pretty close to what you had on that homework. Any other questions on those? All right, so next class we'll come in and we do what we call inverse equations. We'll find the inverse of an equation. Y'all done that? Probably this nine stuff is a little for the end of those college, not college algebra, but like algebra one, algebra two things. So these quadratic formulas in life. Yeah. Well, quadratic formula. Some of 
we all used to sing songs about that. Someone told me they sung a song called They Made It Rhyme with Pop the Weasel or something like that. Yeah, it goes along with Pop the Weasel. Is that the one you did it? Yeah. Okay. You want to sing it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, second test material, we start doing the quad formula. But one of the programs I gave y'all in y'all calculators is the quad formula, okay? So the calculator, I just put in my three numbers, hit enter, and it spits it out for you. Okay. All right, so let's see. Uh, I don't get to nothing else for today. Y'all got any questions? You gonna get on that 2.4 stuff? And y'all, a lot of times I'll be sending y'all videos online, okay? And I got a lot of extra videos in Blackboard. I got homework extra videos that show you stuff, even if it's calculator type stuff. But I will send the calculator video doing these. The ones with the numbers we can knock out on the calculator pretty quick. The ones with the variables, not so much. Okay. All right, so one thing. Have all y'all classes, y'all done all your course agreements for all your classes, right? Because today and tomorrow, they're going to be dropping people that haven't done those course agreements, okay? So we can get y'all certified and then financial aid checks on the way. Yeah, $2. Huh? <laughs> $2 from that. $2, hey, that's $2 one you had today. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, what's the date on the museum? Now, y'all be watching those emails. Now, I haven't had any sick students yet, but in case they quarantine me, I'll be sending emails out as soon as I can because everything has to go Zoom on this kind of day. I haven't hit yet, but I did see last week we had 14 cases on campus between faculty and students. Somehow they had 14 cases. So, I'll just be watching it. Uh, yeah, I got my first shot, so I gotta wait. Like, and we were giving shots, but y'all students are like the last on the list. I got my second shot. So you work up there? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, last semester I got hit twice with quarantine. I had two students, and one was like right on the front row. I'm oh, thinking, yeah. oh, damn, I'm gonna get this COVID now. <laughs> but no, she didn't have it at the time, but her husband did. So by the time she did get it, but it was after. I never got COVID, but I was on a COVID unit for 21 days straight. Ooh. So it's like around it. You was all covered up, I hope. Yes. <laughs> Nursing home? Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. So I had one girl that was from, uh, is it Briarwood? Yeah, it was a Briarwood. Is that where you're at? I'm at Good Shepherd. Okay, okay. Their sister facility. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The Briarwood, they were bad in the beginning, remember? Yeah, we had a, we had a bad, uh, it lasts a little bit. Mm -hmm. Y'all good now? Seven people, yeah. We have one case. Okay. All right, y'all. So I'm going to end this video and I will send it out for y'all later.